Hi, it's me again. Marla Cross 316 here today, and today's topic is about sin and how to overcome it. Now, what is sin? Sin is something that we are born with. Sin is something that everybody on the planet of the earth, from beginning to right now, everybody sins, even the Pope, because they say, Pope, he never sins. He's a holy guy. He's not, okay? He is not God. I just stress that right now. Pope is not God, so if you, I'm sorry if you're a Catholic or anything like that, but the Pope is not God, okay? So let's get into this thing. You First off, you're asking, well, I, I think I know what sin is, but you're kind of you're kind of confused on what types of sins there are. So I'm going to turn in God's Word right now, Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read the Acts of the Sinful Nature. The Acts of the Sinful Nature, this is in verses 19 through 21, it says the Acts of the Sinful Nature are obvious. Okay, you better listen. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred and discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish, ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness or orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, everybody does these kind of things. Now, I might not be a heavy drinker. I've never drank in my life, okay? I've never had one ounce of alcohol in my system, and I'm proud of that. But I still do other things that are sinful. I, okay, I have hatred, okay? Sometimes I just start hating on somebody if I or if they're you know aggravating me a bullies at school or something they they just pick on you all the time the natural instinct is to start hating that person and then also sexual immorality and and stuff like that where you all, everybody has their eyes wandering from place to place we've all had those times where we look at a woman or if a female looks at a man in a wrong way and just it's not right God does not that's not what God created us to be we're not supposed to be doing those kinds of sins and so what is the solution to these problems okay what why can we not get rid of these sins and what can we do about it what can we do about it okay so I'm going to turn to Genesis chapter 4, and I'm going to read from verse 7. And it says right here, it says, if you, do not, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. That's the key. We have to master our sin, okay? It is lying at the door every day. We have a chance to sin in some type of way. Every day we have a chance. Whenever we're doing some kind of right, there's always sin. And who? where does the sin come from? Who is the main master who tempts us? Well, it's all been from the beginning. It's the devil. The devil has been tempting us from the beginning to dissuade us and tell us lies, okay? He's told us lies that just get get us all messed up. We all get messed up when we get those evil kind of thoughts and temptations. It's happened that way since the beginning of time with Adam and Eve. They were deceived by the devil. They were deceived by the devil. And I have to say one thing, and that is God hates sin, okay? God hates sin. And so he tells us that we should hate sin. We should hate sin. So I'm going to read in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19, and this is what it says. These are the six, six things the Lord hates. God does hate some things, okay? Seven that are detestable to Him. Haughty eyes, which is, you know, looking at somebody in a lustful way. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, 
a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. God hates those sins, okay? God hates those sins. He hates sin, okay? If you do not know, God is righteousness. He is righteous, okay? There's nothing wrong with God at all. He's pure. He's pure, and that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be pure. But sadly, sadly, we cannot be 100% pure, okay? We could try as hard as we want to in life, but we cannot 100% be pure because we're going to mess up. That's our human nature. We're going to mess up. But as I mentioned in the er earlier, okay, I mentioned earlier that there is a cure. There is something that happened a long, long time ago that gave us a, a antidote, I would say, to save us from all this hell and condemnation, you know. We are bound from we are bound for hell, okay? But this man in particular came to the earth, okay? And you know who that man is? It is Jesus. Jesus came to earth. So I'm going to read from 1 John chapter 4 verses 9 through 12. Okay? This is how God showed his love among us. Okay? God is love. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. That is the cure to sin, is Jesus. Jesus was, I would say, the bridge to eternal life. He is the bridge to eternal life. You see, God is pure, okay? God is pure, but He had so much compassion, okay? He had so much compassion on us that He sent His one and only Son. Think about that. He sent His one and only Son to die for our sins, okay? He didn't have to do this. He didn't even have to do this. He could have just said, ah, oh, whatever, they don't matter to me. But they did matter to him. God loves us, okay? He loves us. And he sent Jesus. And Jesus, he has love for us. He died on a cross. He bled for us. He died on a cross with nails in his wrist on both wrists, okay? He was hanging naked for us for six hours, naked on a cross. Think about that. Six hours for something he didn't do. He didn't never sin on earth. He just died for everybody's sins. And this right here is how we can be saved. It is by faith and believing in Jesus and what he's done. If we believe what Jesus has done for us on the cross, we can be saved we can have eternal life in Christ, but we must live for God. We must believe. We must believe and commit our lives to God. So he, he loved us so much. He gave us, he gives us a choice. We could either live in our sins, live in the sinful flesh, or we could be saved. We can live our life for God. Just, I want you to think about that. So God, everybody, Thank you for tuning in today. Hope you have a clear mind of what sin is all about. And if you have any concerns or questions, just comment in the section below. And everybody, hope you all have a great Labor Day weekend. Everybody's having a great holidays. And I'll see you all next time.